Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is G. Cole, and welcome to Homegrown, where I get to share with you some good music while talking to some great people. Hello world, I hope you're feeling as good as I am. I want to big up all my homegrown listeners out there and welcome all the new listeners. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so we can keep you updated when new material is available. We will be posting new episodes bi-weekly. Want to thank everyone who has been listening and sharing. Please leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Please check out the website homegrownwithgcole.com to listen and for all things homegrown. The podcast is now available on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Radio.com, and all your podcast platforms. We're also very interactive please follow us on twitter instagram and facebook at my g cole the video of this interview is also available on youtube please subscribe to the homegrown with g cole youtube channel this is episode 72 and today's guest i consider a a music connoisseur a lover of the music he is the host of the syndicated radio show real rockers radio talking about mr marlon burrell and today's episode is brought to you courtesy of aqua gem records latest releases veronica days it's the god in me keith and tex only a smile and yours truly g cole with what love is songs are available at iTunes, Spotify, and all your digital retailers. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a guest in the building. Some call him the encyclopedia. Some call him the music book. A brother that's passionate about the music. Always on top of the information. Got himself on his finger on the pulse of the business. From then till now. Open up a microphone. Oh, my brother. All right, my day I know J. Cole. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Bad Cave, man. Welcome to the Bad Cave. What on? Yeah, give thanks for day <laughs> Thanks for having me still, you know. Pleasure, brother. Pleasure, pleasure. I'm so pleasure. It's indeed a pleasure. Um, I pay attention to, 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 to your program, Star. And just and just overall, your commentary when you talk to folks about the music and just so knowledgeable. That not come every day. That's a passion, right? So where that come from? Boy, I was say... It's more, it's so like a cliche, but it's mm-hmm. an inborn thing. Oh, okay, I, okay. I, I've just always had, um, 
a passion for knowledge, period. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so anything I'm passionate about, I pursue the depth of it. Mm. And I was musically inclined from birth. Right, right, right. So um, it is just natural for me to dig deeper and deeper and deeper and mm. till I get to the root of it if possible, you know. Right, 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 right. And I guess having, having back then you have to go dig into the library and actually meet with some people and talk to some OGs and whatever. Now you have access via internet and stuff like that. But how accurate yeah. you find that information? Do you find yourself in situations where the information that you get from the so-called source and information you get from Google, the other source, is, is there's, there's a difference in the anomaly? Kind very of, much, yeah? very much. Um, a lot of times when I go digging, for information, mm -hmm. what I find, I already know it's not accurate right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> I understand exactly what you mean, sir. Is that only for that to go on? But the other thing too is you have some of these. Um, I always say, yeah, Bob Marley, mechanic, brother, friend, husband, wife, cook, yeah, yeah. gardener. <laughs> yeah. where, where, where you can't tell him say he wasn't there, right? And he didn't. He didn't add at least one word in the song. Ah. We know everything, right? <laughs> so no matter how much research you do. His information, nine times out of ten, is laden with some inaccuracies too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some yeah, frivolity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and even when you speak to the artists themselves, mm -hmm. people who were there, they tend to not remember details accurately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, someone was just kidding me last week that they've seen me correct artists about their own information. <laughs> <laughs> bam, bam. <laughs> and it's probably true. <laughs> Uh, but you know what, still, you do have some people who genuinely don't remember. And you have some people who, you know, it's hard to remember fake information, you know. So when, when information they give from man is never accurate. Especially when the information is 50 years ago. Too. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So if you're going to make up some stuff, it's just your memory good or you got some archives. <laughs> you know what I mean? I dig that, though. I dig that. Because it's always, I feel like knowledge is something that we as a people, we as an industry, we, 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 we don't value enough. You know what I mean? People just feel like they can just get by by just knowing a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But a person like you is like, you're, you're almost like a musical historian. It's like, there's a, but it's not just about the craft and getting it out there. Like you said, it's a passion. It's innate. It's a come from birth, from back in the day. Well, the thing is this. Um, I, I also do a lot of research on like R&B music, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to find information on R&B. Mm -hmm. You can find the very day the song was recorded mm. and, and stuff. <laughs> In reggae music, you can <laughs> find that. Yeah, I have asked producers, what year was this released? Because it's not on the label. Right, and right, right. I think it was... <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they realize why certain things are in line and in order, why the publishing don't work out right and whatever, because you you don't have the info. Yeah, you know what I mean. You have some yeah. people right now in 2019. They they're even being told that they didn't write the song. You know what I mean? A whole lot of them things are going right. Oh now. yeah, oh yeah. As a matter of fact, um, it was about maybe three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I was um, I had one of these classic CDs, mm -hmm. and I um, updated my library. And when I'm putting in the information, I don't just have song title and artist. I also have songwriter, producer, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And looking at the credits, I know that the writing credit mm -hmm. wasn't correct. The, the writing credit you were seeing on the, on the, on the, on, on, yeah, wow. in the sleeve, in the yeah, CD yeah. sleeve. Wow. So, as you mentioned, as you alluded to the technology we have mm -hmm, today, mm -hmm. I DM the artist. Mm. And without telling him what I was doing, I just said, who wrote? such and such a song and mm -hmm. he said I did and I said well according to this CD I have in front of me there's you a different not. name there. <laughs> <laughs> wow 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 and that I can imagine that happens way more often than than than, than we even know yeah because sometimes yeah. the artists don't even know because some of these compilations that come out some of these you know best stars you know what I mean these essential volume 1 through 119 they're not the ones putting them out yeah, and I've also seen mm -hmm. incorrect writing credits um, to credited the writing credits going to Jamaican artists who are covering uh, <laughs> non-Jamaican songs because whoever is putting the record out doesn't realize it's a cover. Right, 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 right. 
Wow. That's that. That's either because they just didn't do the due diligence or the song that bad. It's like Maxi Priest smash over a, 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 a Cat Stevens thing. People forget about Cat. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. that can happen. But as a, as, a, as a person that's doing the, the documentation, you have to, you have to connect it. And, and I've found that a lot of the songs I thought were originals, right. uh, Jamaican songs were not. Yeah. Because Jamaican artists from the 60s until now have done an incredible job of taking an obscure song right, and right. making it their own. Yeah, yeah. That even sometimes the writer might not even recognize. The writer, <laughs> you, you know, somebody told me once, because I, I, I remember, again, being in Jamaica, seeing a lot of these R&B artists come through, you know what I mean, get them to vacation, you know, sure is. And somebody told me, I don't know if it's rumors or whatever the case may be, that Brian McKnight came down there and heard a Sanchez version of theme song on their point. Yo. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> And like he's like he couldn't even mad. He's just like yo, that brother is bad. You know I, what I mean? I can't believe that. And I think it probably happens it probably way more is. often than we hear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? And some of them they just don't wanna. They don't see that the, the, the need to take it to the legal system because we're gonna really get. You know what I mean? Yeah, because at the end of the day, the amount of units that mm-hmm. reggae is sold. Um, by the time they pay their lawyers, there's nothing for them yeah, to yeah, get. Yeah. It's just, it's just <laughs> you, a protocol. You know, and there, there's one case, one famous case, mm-hmm. where it was worth it. And that was in 1982. Mm-hmm. The number one selling record mm-hmm. in the Netherlands mm-hmm. outsold everybody. Outsold Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie. Wow. J.C. Lodge, Someone Loves You. Oh, oh, wow. That sold. That was gold. Right, 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 right. And it was the number one record in the Netherlands for 1982. Mm-hmm. The problem was mm-hmm. the proper writing credit was not on the record. So the writer never got the proper credits. Right. <clears throat> and uh, the producer who credited himself as the author of the song Ooh. was sued. And that's how the great Joe Gibbs went out of business. So they didn't sue J.C. Lodge, they sued Joe Gibbs. Yeah, because it was his name that was on the record. As, <laughs> as a, and the funny thing is, when I researched the, the various pressings of that record, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the Jamaican press says adapted. Yeah. The American press incorrectly credited Charlie Pride, who's the original singer, right, but not right, the writer. Not the writer. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. So there's a bunch of erroneous. But then the European press mm-hmm. said uh, Joel A. Gibson, which is we know as Joe Gibbs. Right, right, right. And uh, that's where the record went gold. So, <laughs> so I, I, I know you didn't talk to Joe Gibbs about it, but do you think it was erroneous? Or you think he submitted and said he was a writer? Well, he does that. Um, that's his that's his thing that's his MO <laughs> needless to say as a matter of fact if you if you can find a Joe Gibbs record yeah a DJ record mm-hmm. where the DJ is given a writing credit and it's not Joe Gibbs and or Errol Thompson listed as the writer you yeah. let me know because I haven't found one yet every single Salter one he, cl- he credits himself as a writer that's a DJ tune what? oh that's a DJ he, he, he gives the singers them thing for the most part, right. but sometimes he doesn't. And especially, As in the case of the mm, J.C. Lodge, Someone Loves You, Honey. Wow. He wow. listed himself as the writer on the European press. And right, the Jamaican right. press said adapted. Right, right, you right, know. right, right. That's crazy. Julian, big up yourself. Julian says, what's up, Marlon? Hey, Julie. Uh, who this now? Uh, Ed Rob, well, hi, Marlon. Disclaimer, this is Joanna Marie. I was able to give up. <laughs> trouble with my not enough. Be a trouble, John Marie. You know. Be a trouble, be a trouble, be a trouble. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, again, I'm just having a blast talking to Marlon right about now because a lot of times there's a, there are people within your midst that have a wealth of information and you don't, don't get the opportunity to sit down and chop it up with them. Your show, right? Yeah. Let's talk about your show. How long you been? How long you been? Because your show is like a, a properly, carefully curated show. Um, you are one of maybe two or three people who, when I sit down to listen to your program, it's not just some music in the background. I feel like I'm going to sit down and it's, it's almost like a documentary, so to speak. You know what I mean? Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about your show. How long you been doing it? Well, I've been doing this particular show since January 2015. Mm, mm. And basically the idea, I call it Real Rockers mm-hmm. because the idea was to highlight rockers. Right, um, right. You know, um, in this real estate. But it's kind of evolved since that and I've expanded the, the playlist a little bit more mm-hmm. and and just to include a, a wider base of music. But the focus is still rockers. what it's called, real rockers. Cool, man. Cool, man. From 2015, January. Yeah. Mm. And you've been doing this show every week since then? 
For the most part. For the most part. Yeah. Yeah, with a vacation here and there. Right. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> what's the response? What, what's what, what's the most popular response you get from people? Do you get the same type of thing? Like, it's like, wow, the information, the information. Information is really, it seems like people tune in mm -hmm. for the music, but they stay for the information. I got you. Because, uh, you know, I get calls all the time that we don't hear this kind of thing anywhere else. Right, right, right. And and this kind of um, program is, it's kind of like a dying breed. You, mm. you don't see the younger, and, and I wish that some of the younger folks in the industry would take up this kind of thing and mm -hmm. um, be passionate about um, acquiring the knowledge, one, and two, sharing it. Right, 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 right. Because to me, um, that's part of the passion is not just acquiring the knowledge, mm -hmm. but sharing it to people who are interested in the information that I have. Do you think that people feel like the people aren't interested or they just don't feel like going to those lengths? Because, you know, we're, 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 we're in the fast food era. Yeah. We're in the era of immediate gratification. Yeah. We can't even listen to a song for, for, for two minutes, let right. alone the entire song right. and so forth so i wonder if a lot of people have the information not sharing information um because they feel like the masses don't want it or is it we're falling victim to the whole situation of um you know um just short-sightedness so to speak i think it's a combination of both mm -hmm. I, I i think there is some short-sightedness um mm -hmm. where one people don't want to put in the work that it takes a lot of work i can imagine <laughs> i can imagine you know what's the more common one of the most common things i hear from friends mm-hmm Get a life. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Because if we get a life, we won't get information. We, won't, we, won't, we have. What I'm saying, you must have nothing going on to be doing all this research. What they're looking. Y'all are foul. Wrong. Wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Marlon, because I love the information that we're getting. It's, 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 it's very, very important. And um, to be perfectly honest with you, I wish that DJs and selectors would tune into your show. You know what I'm saying? You have those places where... You know, it's, it's, like, it's like the restaurants where the cooks go to eat. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so forth. I think a lot of people who are on air should listen because there's information. And not only that, but it's entertaining information. If I love something, I don't mind hearing about it. There you know you what go. I'm saying? That's right. When I was a kid, I was into technology, but more so than just getting a gadget or whatever the case may be, I'd like, I like the books I could read about technology. There you and stuff go. Like that. There if you you're go. passionate about the thing, there you go. it's all around. That's it. Wow. And wow. that is why I brand what I do as edutainment, mm. because it's a combination of, of education and entertainment. I got you. I got you. I got so you. That, that is really the whole aim and goal. And that, that kind of sums up the whole mm -hmm. intention, edutainment, right. because that, that's what it's all about. That's what Real Rockers is all about. Edutaining. Yeah. You know, I want to know is this. Someone like you, you're, yeah, you're passionate about it. You love the music. A man like me, I, 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 I love music from a consumer standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. I consume a lot of music. I buy a lot of music, and I just happen to share it with people. Mm -hmm. I don't consider myself a DJ. I'm a podcaster, but I'm willing to share what's in my headphone with you. That being said, if I like it, it's prob I ain't probably ain't going to share it with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's not, I don't like everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, for you, is it more about the substance of the music and just sharing the culture? Or do you find sometimes, well, well, I really like that one that I want to make. No, I ain't going to research that one. Well, I kind of f fall into a little trap there because mm -hmm. at one time that was my mindset. If I don't really like it, I eh, let it stay over there. Mm -hmm. But I come to realize and understand that what I like mm -hmm. My audience may what I don't like. My audience may, may like. like. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And sometimes I do play a tune that I'm not really feeling. Mm -hmm. But let me see how the people feel about it. Right, right, right. Because there were times I remember, you know, from as long as I know myself, I listen to the radio and. Since childhood, sometimes I wonder how some of these songs become hit songs. Why do people like these songs, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yep. I still feel that way sometimes now. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, I have learned not to take um, the masses' taste for granted. Right. And so as long as something is well-produced... Mm -hmm. I you know you can tell when when an effort has been put into something right right whether or not it it suits my taste or not mm -hmm. you can tell when the effort was put in um, right. to make a good product and if I see that I I'll, I'll share it I mean 
The problem here also, though, is that I absolutely cannot play everything I get. Right. I right. receive way too much music. Right. And I, and I broadcast twice a week. Right, right, right. For three hours. Right. So I have to cherry pick the tunes that I will play. Right. And um, sometimes I, I fall into a dilemma. And I have to say, well, this one or this one. Mm. You know, I got to share this or that because I can't play them all, <laughs> you know. And if there's something that, meh, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got to kind of go through a process of selecting those. Right, 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 right. But there are some songs that you hear from day one. And you know. I just know. Yeah. The first time I heard Trouble by Romain Virgo. Yeah, you know. That's a hit. Yeah. I mean, the from the first drum roll, that was a hit. Right. I, I, I completely agree. There are many songs where... There are a few songs that I didn't think were going to be hits and they actually became hits. You know what I mean? But there are most of the ones that I want to heard it. I say, yeah, man, that's, a, that's, a, that, that's gone. Oftentimes it made it. Where I think I'm most accurate is pointing out the ones that ain't going to be a hit. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? That's I think I'm very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Empress Unique, big up yourself. What's going on? Happy holidays. Happy holidays, Empress Unique. You know, it's, 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 again, it's always good sitting down and talking to somebody like yourself who, because I think right now, it's, you remember, the, you remember when I, the IT boom came in? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? When oh, everybody yeah. was going to, every school and everybody was going to school for IT. Oh, yeah. I feel like maybe seven, eight, nine years ago, that was a music thing where everybody now wanted to be an artist. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I don't honestly think that majority of the people out there really are as passionate and love it as much. As well as it's not the artistry that they're in love with, it's the possibility of stardom. Yeah, yeah. That they're in and, love with. And, and I think technology mm -hmm. has made that very easy. Um, Cheapened it, if you think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The average person can now make their bathroom their voicing booth, and mm -hmm. you know, their bedroom can be their control room. And, and oftentimes it sounds that way too. Exactly. <laughs> 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 and you know, people don't like it when you tell them that. Uh, uh, but there was one instance, honestly, some years ago, uh, someone submitted a song. Mm -hmm. And and I said to the person, Frederick, this sounds like it was recorded in your bedroom. What I'm saying? And he says, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa was honest. He wasn't upset though, right? <laughs> no, he wasn't. Oh, okay, okay, and okay. you know what? And I actually suggested that, you know, um, pay some musicians. Yeah, you know, to get it done. Um, save some money. Mm. You know, I, I know it's expensive. Right, right, right. Save some money and pay some musicians. And, and he did. And the, the end Song result was good. And and I supported him when he did that. I wish more people would take. Clive, welcome to the party. Always good to, to, to see you. Clive says, some music takes more listening and, and um, to be liked and appreciated and accepted. You know what? You're absolutely right. It, it's no different from food. It's no different from, from alcohol, whatever. Certain things are, you know, you it, it grows on you. And I tell people this all the time. There are many songs that I really love now. That when it just came out, it was just uh, for me. You know what I mean? That's it doesn't true. mean that it was true. I have never gone from not liking a song to like it. I've just gone from thinking the song was okay right. to loving it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I've experienced that many times as well. Yeah. But if I if I if I didn't I mean I like it from the get go, it's never come out of that bin. It doesn't mean that I don't listen to it enough. Right. Because sometimes I listen to songs. Just it's like Clive saying, some music takes more listening. I have listened to songs over and over, trying to like it, especially if I know the artist. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They send me a song, and I'm trying to acquire the taste for it. I'm listening over and over, but it just nah, it's, just it's like liver. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. No matter what happened back <laughs> in the day, no matter how much liver you try to eat, I ain't feeling it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But here's another thing I see: social media has now become um, the venting forum. Yeah, you know I mean, the place, the place, <laughs> yeah. place where people vent. Yeah. And the other day, you know, there are people who, <laughs> Empress Unique, you know, say I make fun of me, you know, too dope personality. And I push, you put the dope in caps because I'm always saying dope. I know you're making fun of me, but it's okay. It's okay. People are venting about their music not getting played. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you have the same experience, but nine times out of ten, right? When some, because I personally feel like not, there's not enough space for every hit potential song or potentially hit song to become a hit. Yeah. There's just not enough space for right. it. You know what I'm saying? Right. However, it doesn't mean it's not a bad tune. Right. It just wasn't a hit because it, it never reached where it's supposed to reach. Yeah. Commercially, it wasn't a hit, but cult-wise, it was. Yeah. Now, I do see people come up with songs and they're like, here's my music and whatnot, not, 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 not. And if I 
you send me the song and I don't really feel the song that kind of way there, then people start taking it personal. That's why I do not like when people ask me my opinion. I always say, send me the song, and if I dig the song, I'm going to play the song. But I hate it when people ask me for their for your opinion because normally when they're asking for your opinion, what they're asking you to say is you like the song. It's for your approval. It's for your approval. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. How do you deal with that? Because I know you said you get a plethora of music coming your way. So I know you got to be dealing with that mess. How is it for you to deal with stuff like that? Well, to be honest, um, I just be honest. <laughs> 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 Not to overuse the term, being honest. But to be honest... I just be honest. I, if I like the song, I'll tell you I like it. If I think it needs some work, I'm going to say that, you know? Right. <laughs> if you think it needs a dash away, you know? May I go say that? <laughs> <laughs> I might not use those exact terms, but... <laughs> but you're going to say what needs to be said. And you know what? Honestly, I've had people come back and say, you know what? I appreciate your honesty because, um, you know... I, I've had the ears of other people in the industry and some of them are telling me the same thing. And I'd rather you tell me that than mm -hmm. to have a yes man around me saying, boy, the tune bad, knowing yeah. that. I've had that. I've had people come back and say the same thing. You were, you know, I, I listened to what you're saying and I went and I checked it out. And I also, same thing, listened to other people and I got the same feedback. But those people who come back and say that, they never came off offended from the get-go. The people who were offended from the get-go, no, nah, I've never had them come back. <laughs> I've never had them come back and say, well, you know, you were right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Never had yeah. that happen. But the people yeah. who were open to criticism from the get-go, it hurts a little bit because that's like your ch that's like somebody tell your child's ugly. Yeah, yeah. That's you know what I'm true. saying? That's true. Like, yeah, this baby, you just, the, the, I song, the song is their baby. <laughs> exactly. And so you, you go around your baby, your brand new baby, hey, look at my baby. And people are like, oh, mm, look smart. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, because I've had artists tell me that you know, because I've asked artists, mm -hmm. you have a song in your catalog that's like your favorite? Mm -hmm. And they'll tell me, that's like having children and asking me which one is my favorite, you know. Everybody got favorite kids. Don't let them lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got a favorite child. Don't let them tell you nothing. If you got one, then it's a different thing. Everybody's got a favorite child and a least favorite child. And everybody's just floating around in the middle. So they can say whatever they want to say, all right? Um... He said, Clive, say, I'm not feeling it. To be honest with you, I'm not feeling it. The thing is, and I don't know if it's an artist thing, because artists are ridiculously sensitive. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's true, too. And, and that is why mm -hmm. it is recommended in the industry mm -hmm. to have someone other than the artist deal with right. people like us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, Empress Uni says, well, I will continue to ask you because I value your opinion, Sir Marlon. Um, you're so right to be honest. You know, you're so, just, just, honesty is very important. Very important, especially if it's artists that you dig and artists that you, you, you have respect for. I, I feel like if, if I'm not honest with an artist or producer or whoever, because mm -hmm. the producers come to me also. Right. I, I feel like if I'm not honest with them mm -hmm. about how I feel about a particular track, mm -hmm. I'm wasting their time. I'm wasting my time. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. you know, honestly, I don't have a lot of time to waste. Yeah. Time's, time's, time's precious. You know, I, I, I am, I'm a lot more concerned when a producer comes to me with something that is off versus the artist. Because, again, an artist is just an artist. They're just passionate about what they do. They just want to make yeah. some music. But I think some producers have some lying ears, either some lying ears or they're going based on, the, on what their accountant says, which is pretty much charge him, produce a thing, and send him out the door, right? Because yeah. I've had producers come to me with music, and I look at them and I'm like, really? You should not come to me with this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I, the artist I can see with because he's just an artist. Yeah. A lot of times what you hear in your head and what ends up coming out are two different things. But in between the two lies passion, same way, and love and attachment to that song. Yeah, true. But a producer is a person that's putting those ingredients together and he's on the, 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 the end of it that's listening. So he should be able to be like, <sighs> and I'm not talking about a song that's not a hit. I'm well, talking about something the, bad. The issue is also that uh, a lot of the producers aren't. Are financers really? Uh. <laughs> so they don't necessarily have the the ear, just the to, budget, to, to, right? You know, <laughs> or, or they might not be able to listen to something and says tighten up this or fix that. Right, 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 right. You know, and and and, and a lot of people who we credit as producers, we mentioned Joe Gibbs. Mm -hmm. He's notoriously 
He's labeled as a producer, but what he really is is an executive producer. He's a brilliant one, right? Right. Because right, right. he knows how to pick the hits, right? You know, right, and, right, and right, he knows right. how to market his his stuff, mm -hmm. and you know, and that's what he did. He 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 picked what was released, what what is to be released, mm. and he handled the marketing and the distribution and the publishing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know who else? I think that they say was like that too. Is um, guy from um from Trojan. Can't remember his name. Lee what? Goptel? No, 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 no. Trojan. Trojan. Is it is it Trojan? Um might not be. I'm gonna remember in a second and tell you, but there's a couple of producers like that in um especially in Jamaica. You know where it happens a lot too in hip hop, where a lot yeah. of them are the financers and what they're really supposed to be on those credits are executive producers. Right, true. But because they are the financing part and they'll be able you know, nobody argues with the money. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So it's pretty much, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And they have the producers in, and the real producers sometimes don't get credit. They don't get credit. You know, and the executive producer, just Mr. the financer, as we right, call him, right. gets all the credit for it. Right. And that's how we end up with a lot of things. I have here um, the record jury throw out Baltimore by the Tamlins, but it became a hit a few weeks later. Here's the thing. That happens a lot. You know what I mean? Where, it does. Where, where you, 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 people are wrong. It does. How many times have a record come out and somebody says, I'm not digging the B-side, and the B-side is what becomes a hit? That's right. It's happened a lot. You know? Um, Barry Gordy mm -hmm. did not want to release uh, a Marvin Gaye record, The, the, the uh, What's Going On. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't see the potential in that song, but Marvin was so upset. Right. Just to appease him, Barry said, put the record out. Right. And what happened to what's Smash. going on? <laughs> Smash. Smash. Tupac had the same thing with Brenda's Got a Baby. There you go. You know what That's I'm saying? A, another classic so example. So it's a bunch of classic examples. But at the end of the day, Jack Ruby, got to big up Jack Ruby, legendary. I'm a Wuchi man. Jack Ruby's a Wuchi man. Oh, yeah. Spent a lot of time there, influenced by Jack Ruby. Here's the thing, though. We are, because in anything, stats are crazy. You know? People yeah. pull stats for, for pretty much validate whatever they want, the argument, yeah. right? And there's yeah. a stat for everything. Yeah. So when we talk about the B-sides that became hits, yeah. right, yeah. Um, that pales in comparison to the B-sides that did not. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It pales yeah. in comparison. Because <laughs> we talk about the Marvin Gaye. We talk about the, the, the Brenner's Got a Baby. I'm, and I could tell you other. Marvin, uh, Michael Jackson had one of them too, with, um, with, with even with uh, You Are Not Alone. You know what I mean? Hey, man, you know that's, what I'm a, hey, that's a good one. That's never that's thought it was going to be a hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But those are a few. And, we, and when I say a few, a bunch of records. Yeah. But they pale in comparison to the ones that the producer said, nah, and the artist fought for it, and then the producer caved, and it flopped. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. talks about that. Yeah, right. You know, you know right, what I mean? Right, right, But a lot more of that happened. But of course, to substantiate well, our argument, we'll always say, yo, um, that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and it could happen. And, and, we, and, and we'll, right, and, and we'll use that as our as our point of reference. That's our point of reference. But I, you said something earlier. But when it comes to quality production, because a lot of times, and it doesn't matter how we all have our tastes. I like quality production. Yeah, it doesn't have to. You see, if it's if it's properly, it's, I love live musicians. Oh yeah. So as soon as live instrumentation properly mixed, properly mastered, a nice song, whether it's, it's written right, because a lot of time we sit down and we listen to a bunch of I'm, Dennis Brown is my favorite artist yeah. all time. Yeah. I'm me, every, me too. I, we I, have that thing. You know what I mean? You can't go wrong with D Brown. <laughs> but on every D Brown song, when me love was a hit. Yeah. yeah. It's just a, it's a quality song. Yeah. Because yeah. in my eyes, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, a hit has nothing to do. A hit is not about a good song, you know. And you know, I was I was going to bring up that one. right because you have some D Brown songs. The lyrics nah, I say nothing. No, you, know? you, you got some Bob Marley songs. <laughs> where the lyrics nah, I say nothing. But that's blasphemy to say that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Do not call me. All right. Yeah, yeah. But it is true. It's, it not nah, say nothing. But it when you when, so you, when you talk good. about the arrangement, uh, the vocalizing of Dennis Brown, the Crown Prince, yeah. you know the the way he sings. Yep. You know, the, the, the tone. You love it. The beat, the flow. Everything is right. The mix. <laughs> yep. When you mix every, when all the ingredients are right, it's like it's, yeah. like, it's like cooking stew. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> proper. Yeah. It the right amount of this right and a little bit of the right amount of that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And on top of all of that, too, is we talk about, again, hits. What I, I would like artists to realize is this, especially when they're not funding their own stuff, right? Mm. It's one of them scenarios where it's no different from me coming up with a business or an invention or something 
that to me is going to be the next best thing, the mm -hmm. next big thing. Mm -hmm. So now I go to an investor and the investor has to evaluate this yeah. with their team and see if I need to put the money behind this, right? Right. A lot of times what you're pushing just ain't connecting. You know what I'm saying? Right. And but, but and, and you're looking at it from the standpoint of, hey, let me do me. Yeah, let me be an artist. Let me do this and that. But you're not gamble with your money. You're gambling yeah. with, with, with mine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. I think a lot of times people don't. I, and I don't think it's not a matter that they don't get it. Because you know when artists become responsible? When it's time to spend their money. Their money. You know what I'm ah. saying? When it's time to spend for their money, you know, they get very responsible. And speaking of spending money, too, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's also an ingredient in making a hit. Oh, yeah. Because you have to spend good money um, to pay the right musicians, right? quality musicians, right. Yeah, not just your bread, you know, who can play a two card. Right. You know? Two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, you, you have to um, pay for proper facilities, a good studio that has a good sound. Right. You know, you, you might have to pay a good producer who knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. um, you have to pay to have your tune properly mixed, properly mastered. Yeah. And have all the right ingredients. And then if you really want to do it correctly, you put together a budget for marketing yeah. and promotion. Right. Because that is how hits are made by big companies. Because as you alluded yep. to earlier, some tunes just have to grow on you. Yeah, yeah. And how do you do that? Repetition. Repetition. Right. Marketing and promotion. Because the amount of tunes I get... Mm -hmm. I can't keep playing the same tune for two months. Right, right, right. You know, when I'm getting 50 every week, you know. <laughs> you know, it's amazing you mentioned that. We had this conversation last week when it comes to playing songs for the artists, right? Yeah. Um, artists, there are quite a few things that are prerequisites. At the end of the day, I don't know of any song that has ever broken mainstream, did well, become a hit without... A push. Yeah. But what they do is we sell the organic story. That's, and I try to have the, con the, the conversation with artists a lot of times. The story that you're being sold is the organic story. Well, I was in a basement, you know what I mean? And somebody just happened to oh, pass by and hear me singing and love my voice. Mm -hmm. And then they took me to the studio and we recorded this one song for 50 bucks. And, and it just made its way out there. Never happened. Nonsense. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just a story that sounds cool and sells a product. The reality of it is this. You had a connect who had a connect, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Who put you in the right place and you were with the right producers. Somebody's paying for it somehow, you know? Yeah. Well, well, there are a couple of organic A couple stories, of organic but ones. But there are so few and so far between. Right. You got to look for that. Uh, it wasn't me like Shaggy was one mm -hmm. uh, notable example. Of a, uh, a, a sound that organically went. Yeah, because uh, a pop, very popular DJ in Hawaii... Mm -hmm. Heard the record and really liked it. So he played it on his show and the response was off the chain. Mm -hmm. And because it broke in Hawaii first. <laughs> it bro you know, it's funny you mentioned that song because it did. I, I I spoke to who was Rayvon was in here because I, I was talking yeah. to them about, you know, it was them, him and a couple other artists. And even that one, because I asked, what's the difference with that song um, and also Angel and some others? And you know what he said? The budget. Mm -hmm. So... It picked up steam somewhere yeah. organically. Not saying that right, doesn't happen. Right, right, but right. for it to become that mainstream hit that yeah. everybody's looking for, yeah, yeah. the machine has to get behind has it. To, has, has to. to. Has to. And here's the thing. Just like everything else, it's like pushing a ball or pushing a wheel. It's The, 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 the first pushes are tough enough until yeah. it picks up momentum. Ah. So a lot of times what people don't realize is this. The heavy spending comes early. Early. After <laughs> a while, then that part lightens up. And then you know what? A, a lot of people get discouraged um, during that stage, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not realizing how close they were. They were this close. Right, right, when right. They, when they quit, yeah. when they turn around. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. But they just didn't realize it at the time. A good engineer to Clive said, you're absolutely right. You, absolutely, you know, mention, speaking of engineers, he said a good engineer is necessary. Another big problem people are running into is sometimes I'm going to say I have a producer when the truth is what he's got is an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not yeah. a producer, but he's got an engineer. No, I have I have had artists tell me, mm -hmm. listen, when I voiced this tune, mm -hmm. the only two people in the studio were me and the engineer. Wow. But was he seeing the engineer as just an engineer? He, he was considered an engineer, his producer. 
the engineer was just considered the engineer, mm-hmm. but the engineer was actually acting as a producer. <laughs> In actuality. <laughs> right, right, right. Wow, wow. This thing I call music. Yeah. This thing I call music. And, and that's why I have learned, mm-hmm. and it took me a while to accept it because I really didn't want to accept it, mm-hmm. that I can't take what I read on a label at face value anymore. I can't take what I read inside a CD sleeve mm-hmm. at face value anymore. I have okay. to question anything. So, <laughs> so sometimes, and, and artists, a lot of these artists know me by now. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when I actually catch up with that artist, mm-hmm. I put them aside. Who wrote such and such a song? Yeah. Total different answer from what's in the sleeve. Yeah, I want to know. I'm, sometimes I get the same answer, but mm-hmm. a lot of times I get a different answer. Right, right, right. And and sometimes I'm surprised. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I remember speaking with Papa Michigan a couple of years ago from mm-hmm. Michigan and Smiley. Right. Um, One Love Jam Down, big hit for Michigan and Smiley, 1980. Mm-hmm. The writing credit on that record um, is the producer. Mm. So I asked Papa Michigan, you know, without giving him a clue what's in my head. I just asked him straight up, who wrote that song? Mm-hmm. And he told me it was a producer. Oh, and okay. that was one of those rare cases where... It was... it was Wow, wow. He was confirming what's mm. on the credit. Because the normal response is, what? You mean something I get a credit for? <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. And it's not a regular thing, you know? It's not a regular thing. It's, it's not, not a dance it's, it's, thing. It's not. We, we, it's we, a music we, thing. We, you know, and, and people would think that it, it, it is, but... It's, yeah. it's, it's not relegated to regular music. Um, let me ask you this, because this is one. As a matter of fact, um, mm-hmm. before coming here, before you came on this evening, mm-hmm. I just read an article about uh, Mariah Carey. Uh, All I want for Christmas is you. Yeah, it's it's number one on the the Billboard pop charts every, every year, Christmas. every year, right? Yeah, and the man who wrote and co-produced the song with her is saying that she is not giving him credit. Everywhere she goes and gives an interview, it was her. <laughs> she sat down around the piano and came up with a melody. And yeah, I just read an article this, this wow. evening about it. So, so it's not limited to, to reggae music. That, that's something that's been going on. You know, the Sam Cooks and those people, mm-hmm. you know, from the 50s and the 60s, they had to fight for their for their publishing is it just about mo- because in a case like that you have some of these people who let's say she's speaking um and not giving him the credit but in the paperwork he's probably credited yeah so my question is this um i see when it comes to hip-hop and dance all people have an issue with the what they call the ghostwriter mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. now other genres it was never a problem it wasn't called a ghostwriter it was just a writer yeah because sometimes you're a singer and that's what you do right and we're bringing the writers and the musicians right people, you know right. what i mean right but now, like in a case like Mariah, and a lot of other people do that, what it is, what, what is it do you think the real reason is why people claim, because on the paperwork, they do it right, you know, yeah. but they'll claim in the public eye that, no, I'm the one that res- that's responsible for it. Is it just straight up ego, or is there some cult thing going on with the music industry where they're undervalued, they're valued a little bit less because they're not the ones that came up with that? Head? I think it's both. Yeah? <laughs> a, little bit of, I, a little bit of both? Cause, yeah, especially with artists. Mm-hmm. Artists tend to have big egos. Mm-hmm. So a lot of time, and it's not just them that have the egos, though, mm-hmm. you know. So a lot of time it is the ego to make yourself look right. a, a little more important right. or, you know. Get a genius stamp. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> the, you know that the, you'll find that. Um, I've known of artists who've argued publicly about the authorship of songs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, where a record will come out, one person is listed on the writer. And another person. So, brethren, I never me and you sit down in front of. <laughs> yep. I never me and you sit down by Miss Matty Step, man. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I write the thing. I know you said just you. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I've. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, and you hear it from a lot of people. Again, anytime we talk about certain things, certain names we try to leave out because it's blasphemy. But and I don't hold anything gospel because you never know I wasn't there. Yeah, but right. But people talk about stuff like a lot of things that Bob get credit for them saying never right. I've heard that. You've heard that well. too, right? I've heard that. You have uh, Lennon McCartney, another big one out there. Right. They say a lot of the songs credited to Lennon and McCartney mm-hmm. is Lennon or McCartney, right? But because they were contracted as a team, right? The credit goes to them both. Right, 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 right. That's what some people don't realize too. The paperwork is you see contracts. Contracts can turn some something into some something. You know? <laughs> yeah. I was talking to somebody that they were telling me about a contract, and I was saying. There's no such thing as a standard contract. You have industry standard to everything. Yeah. It's like 
Pro Tools is industry standard. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It right. doesn't mean you can't use Logic. You know what I mean? People are actually putting out recordings right now that actually was based in GarageBand. Right. You know, but Pro Tools is industry standard. So you have certain type of contracts, certain type of things that they deem industry standard. But there's no such thing verbiage-wise that is standard. You do not have to accept anything. You know what I mean? Any contract can be amended. No, anything can be amended. And what people don't realize is you can't say no. Exactly. You can read a contract mm -hmm. um, if you care to. Um I would advise most people <laughs> to hire an attorney to right, do it, right, or right. paralegal. Mm -hmm. right, you know. Yep. And and anything you don't like or agree with, you negotiate to have it amended or changed. Yep. 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 And people tend to not. Do, people tend to don't even read contracts. You know. That's what I was about to say. A lot of times, the contract was never read because I've seen contracts that were not. Comp Here's the thing. A lot of times what you're hiring in a lawyer is really a translator. You know? Yeah. Because yeah. verbiage is used <laughs> to, to, to derail you mm -hmm. and, and to pretty much confuse you. And here comes the attorney to, 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 to translate this for you, right? To decode this, the, the matrix. I know, I know of situations. And, yeah. and, you know, we're talking about name producers in the business mm -hmm. and, and songs that we know, mm -hmm. records that we know, all-time classics, mm -hmm. where... A producer unknowingly signed over his rights to a song mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because he didn't read the contract. You just look at the paperwork, you see a dollar figure, right, and you sign, right, 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 right. right. Not reading the part of the contract that says the distributor owns the music in perpetuity, mm -hmm. meaning it's theirs, not <laughs> yours. Yep, 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 yep. yep. It's no longer For yours ever. <laughs> it's no longer yours. Yep. Yep, it's yep. there. So whatever they're paying you, the dollars yeah. amount that you see looks great. Right, right, right. But that's all you're ever going to get. In the wise words of Winston Francis, anytime you see that word, perpetuity, <laughs> you care to it. <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter what it is. I could have a child. <laughs> if it shows up on the birth certificate, care to an attorney, all right? Because what happens is people are tricking people with these contracts. Yeah. But a lot of times, too, people not even trick nobody. It's just a contract, simple right words, but you just never read it. Just never read it or uh, you read it and mm -hmm. don't understand it and you sign anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you read a contract and you don't understand what does this part mean? Mm -hmm. And don't ask the person who mm -hmm. you're negotiating with, what does this mean? Yep. <laughs> you yep, know? yep, yep, yep. I'm also a firm believer that anytime you say to somebody, let me, let me go, because here's the thing, it doesn't matter what. I could be buying groceries. A lot of times I'd rather go home and read. I, I like to look at things in my environment. Yeah. That's why for when I was doing in corporate, I would always, I refused to go and interview somebody outside of the office. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'd always, if it meant me flying them, in, flying them in, I'll bring them to my office and interview them. Yeah. Because I want you in my comfort zone. Yeah. You know you what go. I'm saying? There you go. My environment. There you go. I always feel like if you ever say to somebody, you know what? Can I let me take this contract home and read it just so I can have a thorough understanding? If you ever get a no or anything from them, it's the first sign that you need not sign this contract. Anytime somebody says, nah, you gotta sign it right now, right? Yeah. That's the first sign, first sign of you about that, to get screwed. A, yeah. <laughs> no loop. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. So people need to pay attention to certain little signs. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. When you're getting screwed, nine times out of ten, tonight, it says screwed somehow, somehow. <laughs> Somehow, someway, it you're says, just, I'm screwing you. You just have to read the thing. You just have to line. read the thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's talk about charts, right? Because yeah. one thing, I've had people ask me all the time, hey, won't you do a chart? And I said, I would never do a chart. I would never do a chart. Because what I think it requires to do a chart is a lot of research. Oh, yeah. Back in the day, charts were compiled by calling the music distributors because that was the only place where the, the, the stats were. So you'd call a VP, you'd call a tab, you'd call whomever and find out what was sold. Sometimes you might have to call the, the music store and find out what well, was sold. Well, yeah, a lot of the charts that I know of is um, back in the 80s, the mm -hmm. 90s, even into the 2000s, mm -hmm. it was the, the retailers, the record stores right. that provided numbers. These are our top 10 sellers this yeah. week and... That's where the accurate data comes from. Cause you yeah. can't even get it from the record label because the record label always fuck. Yeah, it's always yeah, fuzzy yeah, math. Yeah, right. Always fuzzy right. math when it comes to record labels. Right. Now in this day and age where the records, the physical records aren't actually being sold as much, it's mm -hmm. downloads now, right? Yeah. How does one value, how does one do a chart and 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 maintain some form of accuracy? There are different formulas and uh 
you know, and different ways people do it now, um, with downloads mm -hmm. and spins, mm -hmm. um, and a certain amount of downloads is equal to a purchase and right, right, formulas right. like that. Right, almost like streaming formulas. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Is 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 there so right now? Is it a situation of let's get this chart as accurate as is possible, or is it possible to be accurate? I think as accurate as possible mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's. I think as we, we talked about the information is just so much data out there. It's mm -hmm. like you can't even get it all. Right, right, you know? right, right, right. You can't even go to all the sources. <laughs> you, there, there's not enough time to even do that. Right, right. You know, so you you, you kind of have to uh, would select who your sources are, who you, who you consider the most reliable sources. Mm. And um, these days it's it's the DJs and... Because it's really more about popularity now than, than Not sales. Not even sales, yeah, you know, yeah Back yeah. in the day. So a lot of people who are compiling charts now, they're hitting up the networks and the fellow DJs and says, hey, what are you getting a response on? Right. Um, you know, what is being spun the most? And, right. Um, getting copies of playlists and see how many times, how many playlists a particular song mm -hmm. appeared on for the week and stuff like that the, you know these are the formulas mm. that people have to go to because the sales data is it's just not there anymore. it's not there now even when it comes to playlists and and, and kind of gathering that kind of data right when it comes to radio stations outside of the the, the the clear channel stations and major commercial outlets when it comes to your local caribbean radio stations mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. they're not normally playing what the people are asking them for. They're giving the people, the people are listening to what they're playing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and to some degree, and the reason why it is that way, because nine times out of 10 to the DJs that are on the radio station, are pretty much the DJs that play at a club and at the session and at a dance, yeah. you brought them on air because yeah. they are a personality with popularity, right? Right, right. So there is no, you may create a playlist because the, F, the, 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 um, the FCC requires it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's not a situation where the playlist is a representation. That's true. Of what the people are listening to. That's true. So is there even any accuracy to that in terms of like comp trying to compile data from, 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 from your local radio station? It's a tough job because you might have a chosen few mm -hmm. who have the pulse of the people. Right, right. And then you have the masses who are just doing their own thing. Mm. And everybody is minding their own business in terms of, right. you know, what the music... You don't have any continuity or, mm -hmm. you know... Because... Um, you know, I grew up in New York City, mm -hmm. you know, listening to both urban and Caribbean radio. Mm -hmm. And even though most of the DJs on New York radio back in the 80s and the 90s were brokers, mm -hmm. in other words, they purchased their airtime from the radio station right. to do whatever they wanted to, mm -hmm. you still had the majority of them playing a lot of the same thing mm, so mm. The, they were playing what was right wanted by the people they, right. they, they were playing what the people wanted do people still call radio stations to ask for songs yeah but I, I don't see it happening as much and and the debate is on now as to whether radio is a is a is a dying thing mm -hmm. or or if, is it still here to stay and and I'm hearing both sides of the argument still. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, 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 it's one of those things that you will never hear. Some people say, and I've heard the same person say two different things on two different days. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Talking out of both sides uh, of the mouth. Both sides of the mouth. <laughs> one day they say, um, terrestrial radio is dead. It's done. It's gone. You know, it's the over. We're, we're, we're on the tail end of it now, right? And then... And another situation, you ask them and they'll be like, oh, no, 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 it's not going anywhere. Personally, I don't think radio is going anywhere. I think it's a format with which radio is received, in which radio, that changes. People talk yeah. about internet radio all the time, right? Yeah. And the fact that the music is, the radio is now on the internet. It's the same radio station. When somebody says, well, radio stations will die, I think the brick and mortar structure will shrink. Yeah. Right? The physical yeah. outlet yeah. will shrink. The million dollar towers ain't going nowhere. They right. already paid millions yeah. of dollars yeah. for them, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing pretty much is, when you go online, the same major commercial radio stations that you used to that you listen to on the dial, they're the ones that are still the biggest 
Online. Online, correct. You know what I mean? Correct. It's not like your regular internet station is ever going to eclipse them. They're right. still the major players. Right. It's just that now, it's not about how they distribute the music. It's about how you listen to it. Yeah, true. You know what I'm true, saying? True, true, true. So that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize. Radio ain't going nowhere. Yeah. And the same person that's going to tell you today, so, well, radio is going to be dead, Right. He, he ain't telling that to his customers. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So sometimes I really wonder when you say these things. I'm like, hey, careful. I might. I was probably looking to buy some airtime. Yeah, you, yeah, you know, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, yeah. But yeah. I always wonder when it comes to radio. Do radio DJs and club DJs have the capability anymore to break an artist like they used to? I always say break an artist. I mean, bust him. Very few. Yeah. I, I think there are a few left. Um, I still listen to New York radio a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think DJ Roy New York is, is one such person still. Yeah. Um, and he does both the, the clubs and he does the radio. Right, right, right. So Irish Jam, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's one of those people. And Chris the Dubmaster. Chris also. the Dubmaster. Yeah, Dubmaster. Chris. You know, you know it's a funny thing? When it comes to credibility, you know, when you talk to the, cre the, the credible people, they always go right back around to the other credible people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Though every time I talk to somebody who I deem a credible source to have a conversation with about this industry, reggae, and who are the players and who can make an impact, they always go back to them two names. You know what I mean? Yeah. DJ Roy and Dub Master Chris. Yeah. 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 So you're still in tune with what's going on in these New York radios. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I've, I've been listening to those guys since they've been doing radio. Mm -hmm. I used to always hear their names, mm -hmm. you know, because they they were in the clubs. But when they started doing radio, you know, they have influenced me in how I do radio. Right, right, so, right. So, you know, and, and those before them. But um, I think those are two guys who, uh, who still have that ability. To break an artist. To break an artist. Wow, wow. And then there are not many of them left. Right. I think a David Rodigan in the UK can still do that. Can still break an artist? Yeah. So how come they're not doing it, though? Is it that they just choose not to? Or, you know, they're just busy doing a whole bunch of other things, making money so that they don't have no time for that? I think one of the biggest problems um, radio people have, mm -hmm. myself included, I'm sure you have the same problem, mm -hmm. is filtering through all the stuff we get. <laughs> 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 right, I'm going to tell you something. I had somebody tell me that they're going to send me some music, right? For some artists. I mean, and, I'm, and I mean it in no discontent at all. It's just, I'm just, just, just doing the math. Somebody said they're going to send me some music. And they said, listen, it's a lot. I'm going to send you a couple of emails, you know, so, so you don't have to go through them right now. You know what I'm saying? So I, I probably expected maybe I get like five or six. You know what I mean? I got, I got 44. And then I got a couple more. So I'm up to like about 50, 55 right now. And they're all we transfers, which ultimately means each one of them have at least eight, nine songs in there, right? You know, so as a result of that, I just ha haven't opened one yet. It's like you look at it and it's like, oh, snap. It's like, it's like because I, cause, Cause, cause you have to take a day to, to like sit down. Just, yeah. You know, and, and when I had the time, I don't have the time so much. Now I used to do that. I used to have a day. Okay, this is mm -hmm. the day and I have X amount of hours. Right. To filter through the music that I have. Mm -hmm. And then once I go through what I have, then I have to select, you know, the best ones out of the batch, <laughs> you know. And then out of the best ones in the batch, right. I can't play all of those either. Right, so right, right. then I have to cherry pick the ones I'm going to play <laughs> from those. So it's like... And but, I think that's where the challenge lies, right. really, nowadays. Right. Uh, we just have so much to go through. It's not like back in the day where, you know, you might have three, four new records a week. <laughs> no, you get that every 15 and then, minutes. And then you can, you say, yo, out of them, I don't want you, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Different thing right now. Yeah. When I talk about fluidity, it's, it's almost, it's liquid right about now. Bless up, George. Well, go on. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, it, 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 it is amazing. It is amazing. It's, it's absolutely amazing, this whole business of music. I wonder oftentimes... Here in South Florida, you know, one of the things that I've had a conversation with major producers is the fact that we don't really have a major clear channel station down here that supports yeah. reggae music, right? True, true. You have, I want to talk about clear channel stations, I'm talking about the, 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 the 
Y100s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The hits 96. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I don't even know if you want to say 99 Jams or them. But but let's, for argument's sake, we can put them as mainstream radio. Yeah. All right? So you have like a Hot 105 where there's a program on every Saturday night. Yeah. Probably four hours or whatever the kids may be. It's three hours. Three actually. hours. Yeah. From, it was 10, 10 to, to 1. 1. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's the consistent one. And then, of course, there's 99 Jams. Yeah. Another similar situation where it's maybe one or two days a week. Yeah. Um, Power 96 doesn't have any. Yeah. Um, so, so, so those are the two outlets that we got. Yeah. And you're given, if you add the two up, it does not, it doesn't amount to eight hours. No, you know, a good friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, down here in South Florida. KC. Yeah. From yeah, yeah. Uptown Mixing. Big up KC. KC once said to me, mm-hmm. uh, these R&B stations mm-hmm. that play reggae music mm-hmm. need to realize mm-hmm. that there is reggae music that was made in this decade. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that is so true. And that's a good point because so true. when they do play reggae, yeah. and I listen, I, I listen to Hot 105 a lot um, yeah. during my daytime hours on the job. Mm-hmm. They'll play a Bob Marley. Mm-hmm. They'll play an action, Terra Fabulous, Nadine Sutherland. They'll play a Murder, She Wrote. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll play a Serrani playing games. A UB40. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'll play a Jib Shan Holy. Right, 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 right. But none of those songs were recorded in this <laughs> decade. <laughs> I'll try it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want Sean Paul. Yeah. You know? Oh, my. Clive said, oh, my. Just imagine the amount of demos I've listened to at VP. I feel your pain, Clive. I feel your pain. Oh, man. I, I feel your pain. <laughs> EK says, it's so nice to see the real Marlon Burrell in real life. He does. He's real. A lot of people think you're a figment of imagination. First of all. Uh, I'll give that. Yeah. Well. Like you're a logo. Um, let it be known that um, I'm not a person who loves cameras. So maybe that's part, <laughs> part of the reason. <laughs> That is real. He's a real guy. He's a real guy. I promise you, EK. I promise you. Music, the radio, the whole nine. <laughs> we, we, we talk about radio because I feel like radio is two things. I think radio is the physical aspect of radio. And I also think radio is um is a verb. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can do radio. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever think or do you think that on any of these commercial stations, you think there's place for a regular format because let's let's go Hot 105 for example yeah. right the best variety of hits and, and, and all these right yeah, yeah. Um, but seven days a week they're on and seven days a week there are slots allocated to play I don't ever, I don't think I hear much hip hop on Hot 105 no but 99 Jams and Power 96 they all have those right. things so Hot 105 plays the best variety of hits and, ho- and oldies seven days a week except for that little slot that, that, that reggae has 99 Jams is playing urban you'd say urban contemporary probably yeah Seven days a week, yeah. Except for that little slot, and then of course, Power Power ninety six is is urban radio, yeah, all time. Right. Do you think ever our future going on at these radio stations? There's anywhere in these radio stations for a reggae format, like a consistent radio reggae format, where there's two three hours a day that could be allocated to reggae music. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, it's been done in mm-hmm. other markets. Is it still being done in other markets? In New York City, WBLS still has David Levy, I believe, on a Sunday evening. And, it, and that's a, a clear channel station? Um, like mainstream commercial radio? It's a ma- mainstream, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. WBLS is, um, you know. Actually, WBLS, when I was growing up, mm-hmm. was the urban station that would introduce the mainstream market to reggae music. Mm. And I credit them with breaking dance hall. To the, to the mainstream U.S. market. Right, right, right. You know, the late Frankie Crocker was, uh, was on that right, station. Right. And I remember clearly the summer of 1989. Mm-hmm. I think that's when Dancehall arrived in the USA. Right, via um, New York. Via New York. Mm-hmm. Um, you had Telephone Love by J.C. Lodge, mm-hmm. massive hit in the urban market, in the, in the Caribbean market. Mm-hmm. But then it crossed over. Um, via WBLS, and it actually hit the R&B charts. Right, right, right. And by 1989, by the summer of 89, there were three songs that were in rotation on WBLS. And they were Sorry by Foxy Brown, Mm -hmm. One Blood by Junior Reed, Mm -hmm. and Life is What You Make It by Colonel Might and Frighty out of the UK. Right. And I think that's when reggae arrived in the USA. And by the following year, Mm, Shadow Ranks was signed to Epic Records. Right, right, right. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So that's the impact that radio has had. And that's when dance all exploded and then came the offshoot we call reggaeton. Right, right, right. But but, that being said, though, because I think if the issues that the music business is encountering right now is not a reggae thing, sales are dropping in every aspect, right? Yeah. Music is selling still enough. Yeah. 
not a fraction of what it used to. Right. Right. And um, streams are replacing that, which to me, I think is the worst thing to have ever happened to music. Is streams, you know what I mean? Uh, at one point, I thought it was MP3s, but I've switched. It's now streaming. Yeah, yeah. Worst thing ever happened to music. Now, when we look at radio and how radio is formatted and how things are going, why do you think it is right now that r- I feel like re- reggae and dancehall has actually been kicked out of the mainstream formats in most markets? Because they can't say it's because music, the reggae music, now sell because nothing. They were never on the same scale. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Reggae music, in comparison to hip hop, even when people were buying physical CDs, mm-hmm. it was a fraction of the sales yeah. in comparison to most of what yeah. we call mainstream music. Yeah. So what is it and why is it that you think that radio stations and radio in general have now become apprehensive about allocating a, a, a designated spot or a consistent spot to reggae or dancehall music? Well, dancehall is easier to answer mm-hmm. right now because... I believe the reason why we don't hear dancehall breaking on mainstream up until 10 years ago. Content. Not so much the content, but I think the the, the, the beat has strayed away from the authenticity. It sounds oh. it sounds a lot closer to the, the hip hop that they're already playing. So it's why play really... why play fake hip hop if we got real hip hop? Right. It, it it's just like when you had uh, some some reggae bands from you know Timbuktu mm-hmm. playing something that kind of sound like reggae, but it's not really reggae. Why, why, why would a reggae DJ put that out there playing? Right, right, you right. Know? So it's kind of the same thing now with dancehall. With dancehall, dance mm-hmm. because the, the, the beat ha- has shifted mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. the authentic beats that we know that that descended from the Kumina and the Pokomania and the, mm-hmm. and the straight reggae, mm-hmm. and you know, that evolved into what we know called a dance hall beat. Right. And it's kind of drifted more to the hip hop side. And um, just a few months ago, Danny Brownie was um, talking about yeah. the same yeah. issue because um, his filthy rhythm was sampled by Mickey Minaj. And, mm-hmm. you know, he's saying they're sampling a rhythm that I made in the 90s. Where are the, the rhythms now? Yeah. You know, that, that, that. Are there any rhythms that were made in the last five, six years that will ever be sampled? Probably not because they are already samples. Right. And, and and I also say the same thing about reggae rhythms also. Mm-hmm. Listen, I'm gonna I'm just gonna put this out there. And people might not like me <laughs> saying this, but I'm just gonna put this out there. Uh, I, I like when a classic one drop reggae rhythm is remade or lick over or whatever you wanna call it. Mm-hmm. And there's a place for it. Right. But I think it's too much. Right, right, right. Because it seems to be all that's coming out right now. There, 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 there are rhythms that were originally made 50 years ago mm-hmm. that are being made over today. Mm-hmm. And my question is, and I've asked this question on my show several times, where are the rhythms that are being made now that will be licked over 50 years from now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think that's where we have gone wrong. We have relied too much right. on the past. And I'm not saying there's not a place for that because right, right, there is. Right, right, right. But yeah. I, I think we need to get back to the drawing board mm-hmm. and start creating music from scratch, creating melodies from scratch, creating rhythms and bass lines and beats right. from scratch. Right, right, right. Um, that's so accurate. It's hilarious. The, the, uh, no, 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 Don Penn. Boom. I says. Ah, uh, there you go. Exception. <laughs> re- reggaeton. You, you, you know what? You know what? You know what's crazy? Um, uh, but what you're saying right now really, 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 really adds up to they didn't take the reggae format from radio. We stopped making reggae music for radio. And that's what it is. And people would try to say, oh, they're my fight against the thing. Mm. No, 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 no. It's not that. Yeah. And I think if there was more of what we had and what we were doing mm-hmm. into the 90s coming on down the line, mm-hmm. I think we would have more because I've, I've uh, I'm revealing this publicly for the first time, mm-hmm. but I've had conversations with some of those stations. Right, 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 right. You know, they that they, they they've had interest, mm-hmm. and I, I you know, and I and, and I just think that's part of the problem is that we are not seeing the consistency. Right. One, and two. Um, 
I think the other side of the equation also is us. Yeah. I think sometimes we're not knocking on the doors. Right. We're expecting them to be opened. Yeah. It, do, do you find that people have this? I, I think you're right. And the reason why I think you're right is because I see it even from the creative side. The creative side in terms of people think that it's our birthright. So somebody needs to come and find yeah, you. Yeah, you know, yeah. I have, I have, it's like when we hear quality music that comes out from non-Jamaican people, right? Mm-hmm. And when we say quality, I mean great quality. But people feel like, yeah, but it's still not supposed to be accepted as much as ours because it ain't us. Right. You know what I mean? It's yeah, almost, yeah, I'm a yeah, birthright. Yeah, so yeah. Really, realistically, you're supposed to be accepting what I'm giving you, even though I'm half-assing it and they're giving you the right thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So I think a lot of that stuff has been hampering us to walk on cat eye. The world is a cycle no matter what goes around comes around. True, 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 true. But sometimes you'll get left out of the cycle because all that's going to be coming back around is, is something from a past era. And I've always had that conversation within the last 20 years or so forth. Is there anything that will be considered vintage? Because what we're doing now is tapping into vintage. Yeah. But, yeah. but 40 years from now, will what we're making right now be considered vintage or will it just be dated? And that's the question, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and that is what I'm trying. Right. Case in point. Mm-hmm. Going out to any local event mm-hmm. where you have a DJ spinning music, mm-hmm. what are they playing? Back in the day, when you go to a dance, a party, or any event where there's a DJ mm-hmm. spinning tunes, mm-hmm. you would hear some of the most recent hits. Right. When I go out now, I don't hear the current songs being played. <laughs> I care. And, and I think that's another um, area in which we have gone backwards. Right. Um, and all the DJs, for the most part, with a the, 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 uh, few exceptions, mm-hmm. play the same thing. Right. You can tell what's coming next from yeah. any given DJ. Yeah. And back yeah. in the day, that's not... But how, that's radio, too. And it, that's it, radio, it, it too. It happens on radio, too. Yeah. yeah. And back in the day, that's not how it was. You yeah. used to be listening and like, I wonder what's next. Yeah, yeah, I wonder what. And, and plus, what this DJ is going to play. Yeah. Because certain DJs were, were, were known for giving you something different. I'll tell you this. I pride myself and I make a concerted effort. It's not that I'm just digging in the box of obscurity and trying to find some records that nobody heard. Right. But my ear is not glued toward... The traditional what's mainstream, what's on the radio, and what I hear in the dance hall. Right. And if you if you love music, you're not your ears not going to be geared there anyway because that stuff's garbage. Right. A lot of times it's what got paid to be played, and the promotion's right. just right, and the money pull ups are right. So now it's recurred. You know what I mean? So many yeah. times that that's what's on the forefront right now. Right. So for me, you know, when I play most of the songs, I am actually amazed when somebody said to me, "Say yo." I, I don't hear those songs on the radio. I'm like, for real? Because those are, they're good songs. And they're songs that I'm listening every day. And I automatically assumed that people are playing those too. But when I now take a minute to go listen to radio, which I used to sell them, I do it a lot more now mm-hmm. just so I can see what's going on. But mm-hmm. there's a time when I never listen to radio, mm-hmm. right? I'd listen to internet stuff and podcasts only. But when I go now and I listen, I'm like, oh, so that's what they're talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's when that's when people got to dial into our, to our, to our real rockers, right? Yeah. And, and get something different because if not, you're getting an extension of the same thing wherever you go. Now, here's one thing that uh, doing the Real Rockers program has taught me. Mm-hmm. That radio is also a dying art in Jamaica. And I know that because I visit Jamaica annually anyway. Right. Now there are some 30-something radio stations. Mm-hmm. When I lived in Jamaica as a child, there were two <laughs> stations. We had RJR and JB. And them's a radio diode. Uh, yeah, and then here comes Irie FM to, yeah, yeah. you know, put, put that dent in the whole thing. That was well me some Irie FM. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but um, that's also a dying art because one of the most common feedback, I, I'm i actually amazed mm-hmm. at the amount of people that I hear from in Jamaica. Yeah. They say, bro, you them two and I play on radio in Jamaica. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. hear that a lot. hear that a lot. I, and I listen to radio. I, I've been a radio junkie all my life. Yep. So I'm glued, whether I'm in Jamaica or elsewhere, I'm glued to what's happening on the radio. I am not impressed. I, yeah. Well, I used to love radio. I ain't going to lie. I used to love radio in terms of, and it wasn't just about the music that's being played. You know what I mean? It's the commentary. It's, um, yeah. You know, some, there are some radio stations that, uh, that have reached out to me and say, hey, they'd love me to come on and play music on there. You know what I mean? Because it's a little different. But I said to them, boy, have you listened to the program or what I do? 
because there are some days when I come on and I play music, but nine times out of ten, that's not all that I'm doing. Yeah. If I'm on for two hours, I might go off on it. You never know. You yeah. know what I mean? It yeah. may end up like, I'm on radio to, now. I was going to say, <laughs> tonight is a prime example. <laughs> I'm on radio right now. You know what I'm saying? So, big up all my people listening at Royal Zion and it's radio and you, <laughs> and all the people listening at homegrown.com, but um, homegrownwithgico.com. So, it is, it is one of those things where I feel like that's what we miss. And that's what is missing yeah, from yeah, radio. Definitely. The physical structure of radio still exists, but I feel like radio, doing radio, is what we've gone away from. Yes. And you know? um, there's a reason why presenters are called radio personalities. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and we're missing a lot of personality from the personalities. Right, right, right. You know, we don't see that. We just say, we just hear music. Yeah. And, um, a 10, 15 minute mix and you heard blah, blah, blah. That, and that's even if they tell you what yeah. you heard. Because they don't I, tell you who... who I remember when I, when I started um, doing college radio in the 90s. Mm-hmm. I, I started doing college radio in 1993. Mm-hmm. They used to have stickers. The record companies used to put stickers on the records and the CDs. Mm-hmm. It says, say it when you play it. Mm-hmm. You know, just reminding you that yeah. when you play it, just tell the people what they're what, what you're playing. So, yeah. That is something that... it. Drives me bananas when I go onto some radio stations and they they, they want to put because my thing is this. Some people say, Well, you can play a couple of songs and then announce them after. Me mm-hmm. not do that. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I will, you know, I don't like to talk over records. Right. So what I'll do is I'll make the record. Play. And that's and that's another pet peeve of mine that I <laughs> when, people, when, when the radio you talk out half of the thing, yeah. half of the record, and you don't play more than forty five seconds of the record anyway. So right. when you talk out right. it's crazy to me. But it's like Hope says she agree with you. Um uh, Clive says the simplicity of older reggae is now hits for non-Jamaicans. That is true. Um, that is very, very true, you know, and that's something I'm going to get to in a minute too. Um, but when it comes to actual radio, playing the songs, I've had radio stations ask me to just do mix, just play songs, right? I intentionally don't want, don't go learn for mix. I intentionally use what I use because I don't want to be that guy that's just mixing songs and you have yeah. 20, 30 minutes go and right. it's just a mix. I don't like right. it. Right. You're right. I feel like the, 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 the purpose of radio is to put the music out there, educate right. the public on, as to what it is. Right. It's a marketing tool. Yeah. No different from how you want me to be explicit when I do the commercial. Right. Right. Because when we do the commercial, you want me to talk about the, what the product is, how much it costs, where they can go get it. Right. Exactly. So why can't I do that for the artist when, 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 when the go. song's played? There you go. And so that's a battle that I fight with radio all the time. And it's not one radio station. Um, if, and sometimes we'll say to ourselves, well, overseas, because we, 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 we love to credit the UK. I think the UK has had this. This, this relationship with Jamaica that we just adore them a little too much sometimes. You know what I mean? So we credit the UK for everything good. You know what I mean? Good quality music. Honestly, I get some crap from the UK sometimes. But that's, anyways, different argument. <laughs> but, but the thing is, you know, I've had stations in, it's, it's not like a Jamaica thing. It's not an America thing. Right. I've had stations in the UK and Europe ask for the same thing. You know, but what happens is once I do what I do, then, then they appreciate it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because for me, it's a situation where if you're just playing music, then what makes me different from the Pandora playlist? Right. And truthfully, right, right. truthfully the Pandora playlist and the Spotify playlist way better than the mix I may get from the station anyway. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> there's something new on it at some point in time. Right. So if I'm going to come onto your thing and all I'm going to be hearing is a playlist or, or just somebody a mix I haven't done and them giving them drop with them station, with them station ID, yeah. then I might as well go to Spotify. Yeah. I get yeah, some cool and, stuff. And I think more than half of the 30 plus radio stations in Jamaica do exactly that. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I I typically rent a car when I go to Jamaica and I'm driving all over the island. Mm-hmm. So at any given on any given day I'm driving for like two hours going and two hours coming back. Mm-hmm. And I'll be on one station for forty minutes and I might hear somebody talk one time mm-hmm. in those forty minutes. I hear a lot of that. Mm, mm. Wow, you know. So and this is not one radio station. It's like this is like everybody, right? In it's a most place, in a place where there's thirty something radio stations now. Yeah, mm. and most of them are doing that. There, the, the, and to me, the, the, there are only a few good ones. So there's a greater quantity, but the quality has diminished mm-hmm. so badly because when you just had RJR, JBC, and, and Irie FM. Mm-hmm. The radio personalities. You had the best of the best because they were only so few. Right, right, right. Available. Right. No, everybody on them granny can be on the radio. <laughs> you know. God save the queen. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, you know, it's 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 amazing. 
Um, the other thing that they'll do pretty much is this. They'll say the programs that have content, they'll put it in the nighttime. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me tell you a classic story. Yeah. You know, in the early 2000s, from 2003 to 2006, I was, in, I was uh, doing a program at a radio station in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Big up Allentown. Allentown, Pennsylvania, WMUH. Woman. <laughs> and there was a country music program on the station because mm-hmm. it's a community station, mm-hmm. non-commercial. And there was a country music station, a country music program on that station mm-hmm. in the middle of the afternoon, mm-hmm. drive time, right. from 4 to 6 p.m. Yeah. And the local country station figured out that during that spot, their listenership is way down. <laughs> and they're trying to figure out why. Right, 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 right. And you know what they did? Mm-hmm. They poached this guy from WMUH. To bring over to the, to bring over to the, the commercial <laughs> station, to give him his own show, and put him on at 3 o'clock in the morning. Right, right, right. To get so that, so that they wouldn't have a competition at that time. Right. So instead of putting him in, in prime time mm-hmm. on their station, mm-hmm. where they know he has the listeners because he's taking all of theirs. Right. You take the quality program yeah. and you hide him at nighttime. That's no different from record labels when record labels was, was assigned an artist to shelf him. Remember that? Yeah. Like if they have they yeah. have an artist coming out and they, and and you that that there's another artist down there that might be a competition. They sign the artist and and shelf him. Yeah. So that's the same thing. And I don't get it when it comes again when it comes to radio. It's, it's there's no there's no creativity. Nothing is is unique. There's no there's no radio station. There's no radio station right now that you can't say okay that station is known for this. Yeah. Or yeah, that station yeah. is known for this. Right. Radio, I, I say to people this all the time, I still think radio is very important. It I is. think radio is very impactful. I agree. I think radio has been misused. You know what I mean? I, I, I agree with all of the above. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's thoroughly been misused. And then now when it comes to, again, radio and getting stuff out there, right? You have radio. The, half the problem, too, is who runs stuff. And, and that's the reason why I'm a believer in, 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 in hierarchy. And I always feel like you got to have your CEO. You got to have your middleman, your, your management, your middle management or whatever the case may be. Yeah. The problem a lot of times is when you only have one thing going on. So if you got a guy that believes in only one thing, mm-hmm. there's nothing in between there right. that, that's going to buffer that and tailor that or nobody that they trust and say, you know something, let's try this, let's do this, let's do that. Because a lot of people who are at the top of the chain right now probably is just the guy that used to be at the bottom and somehow, some way he, he, he made his way up. Yeah. So he still has the mentality and the mindset that he's taking there. And now that's what he's putting on onto everybody. Yeah, right, right. So right now you have people running radio stations that we're talking about getting people from the club and putting them in radio stations. Right now you got radio stations being ran by the dude from the club. Yeah. And, and you know, honestly, that that's something I've, I've looked at also. And, I, I, and I've asked the question some industry people can tell you mm-hmm. because I've asked it how do these people get these jobs <laughs> because I know I can refer them to 10 people that's more qualified than <laughs> hey man hey man <laughs> all I can say is hey man as a matter of fact I can do the job better <laughs> and it's not that I think I'm, I'm the, the type of person that's necessarily fit for that position right. but I I feel I can do better than how do these people get these jobs? You know, even the executives in the record companies sometimes. Yeah. Like who's making these decisions? Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the worst thing and the most dangerous thing that can happen to anybody, them to mankind and, and as a whole, is anybody becoming successful at doing something the wrong way. I yeah. have many people and yeah. success is yeah. relative. Yeah. And when I say yeah. success, I mean maybe financially successful. You know what I mean? Yeah. Doing something the wrong way. And they've achieved some level of success. Yeah. You can't tell them nothing. The right way is now out the window. And you know what? I've heard Mr. Vegas make that argument about um, the same thing we were re- referring to earlier in terms of the direction that the dance hall beats have gone into oh, over the last several yeah, years. Yeah. And, and you know, it made me think. I said, you know, I think he's onto something mm-hmm. here. You know, he was saying that uh, the, the the current type of beats we have in dancehall mm-hmm. was brought on by Vibes Cartel mm-hmm. and the great success he's had. So when there is success, everybody jumps on that bandwagon. Mm-hmm. And so Vibes Cartel were, was, you know, started doing his songs on those kind of beats and he took off so everybody followed suit. Mm-hmm. But the point Mr. Vegas was making, those beats fit the style of Vibes Cartel. Yeah, yeah. 
But everybody else that's jumping on it, don't really... But, and that's the reason why I always feel like this. Statistics are the most... Statistic and analytics are the most important thing in anything, even in your household. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if you did the stats, run the stats and the analytics, who else that did it has had the success that Mr. That, 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 that Vibes Cartel had? No, no, no. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So pretty much you see him Correct. do something <laughs> and you all tried it, but it hasn't worked. And, and I think we've taken several steps backwards mm -hmm. um, because we've had those who have paved the foundation from the 60s until now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we've had the, the Millie Smalls and the Desmond Deckers and the Jimmy Cliffs and those people from the 60s who were having international success um, to put our music on the map. Mm -hmm. And it progressed until we've had the Black Uhurus within the first Grammy. We've had mm -hmm. the Yellow Mans and right, right, we've right. had the Shabarangs, right. back-to-back Grammys with the Dance All albums. Yep. And I think we're like doing a 360 right now. Yeah, because we're undoing what, what was, was done, what it has taken 40 years to do. You are so right. You see, the thing is, it's, it's almost like you, you, you know, people were climbing, 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 like Naomi Cohen song says, climbing, 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 and it just stopped. You know what I mean? It, it, it just stopped. And even when it comes to dancehall, people ask me a question about the dancehall stuff all the time. It comes to the dancehall music. I think half the issue with the dancehall music nowadays is that you can't dance to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dancehall music was and a music where... And that's why it's where, called that. That's why it's called, you know what I mean? They played in the dancehall and people got dance to it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Right now, if you hear a dancehall song come out today, you say by the time the beat connect with you and you say, oh, snap, see, I'm going to start move, the melody changes. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, yeah. the beat changes. Yeah. It's, 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 like, it's, like, it's, it's like you can't have a consistent rhythm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And that, of course, is coming also from the whole... The whole taking stuff from from hip hop. Now, I am a firm believer that evolution does take its course. Oh, it does because certainly. every music that we love evolved from something else, but uh, it never right. lost what it was. You know, in order for for, for 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 reggae to come about, it doesn't mean that we erased rock steady and them. You know, you know what I'm saying? Correct. But right about now, it seems to me that the move is to replace the dancehall music. You know, because there's because most people who say it's like back in the day, if you realize, you know, most of the songs that we consider dancehall back then would be reggae today, you know. You, and and that's a point <laughs> I make all the you time. When you when you look at the era, I credit Sugar Minot mm -hmm. and Barrington Levy mm -hmm. as being the two people who are, have have the most to do with. The evolution of what we now call dancehall. Dancehall, yeah. You know why? Why there's a Mr. Vegas can't say my dancehall artist yeah, because of people yeah, like those. Yeah, yeah. I, I think those are you know two very important figures in terms of the foundation of of dancehall. Mm -hmm. I, I I I would credit Sugar Miner as having the first what could be considered the first dancehall album. Right. Live loving. Right. The concept was. Um, use classic studio one rhythms mm -hmm. and put new songs over them. Mm -hmm. That was never done before. Right. And that's how it was done in the dance hall. You, you flip over the record, you play the B side, the version, the version yeah. and, and you sing on it. Sugar yeah. Miner took that to the studio yeah. and made a whole album that way. Right. Um, then came Barrington Levy, who started doing that consistently, and he exploded on the scene. Mm -hmm. And then the whole thing just took off. And back then, what we. What was considered dancehall then is actually rubber dub. Yeah, yeah. Eka Mouse, what do them? Yeah, yeah. You know, rubber dub was dancehall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was rubber dub, but <laughs> yeah. back then it was, was dancehall. Yep. But because of the Sing J style, yeah, it was yeah. stigma, and yeah. you know, certain factions of the population didn't like it. Yeah, because, you know. Yeah. You know, and if you're labeled dancehall, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big up yourself, Richie. Thank you so much for joining the party. Uh, Clive says, in Japan, radio is slowly being eliminated. Um, and is that radio, as in radio, the physical entity, or radio, the business of radio? Because the music has to get out there somehow, some way, right? And at the end of the day, if I am to not have radio, Right, mm -hmm. then it means I'm gonna have to go research because what here's what radio is to me. Radio is Marlon doing the work, all the work, playing it on air, and I hear your work and then decide what I want to go get. Yeah, you. Go. That's what radio is, right? That's what I did, you know, back in the day. Right. Uh, you know, when I was a teenager. Right. 
I used to, growing up in New York City mm -hmm. in the 80s, from, you know, the, the second half of the 80s, mm -hmm. the only time you heard reggae music on the radio mm -hmm. was at nighttime, mm -hmm. starting at 11 p.m. when Gil Bailey signed on. Right. Until 4 o'clock in the morning. Right. And on weekends, you, we had WLIB. Right, right, right. And that's how I knew what I wanted to purchase. So... Based on what I heard on the radio, mm -hmm. mentally I made a list of the records that I was going to go to the record store and ask for because I can't buy all the records I wanted. Right, right, so right. So mentally I made a list of the ones I wanted the most and went and buy it. Right. And that's the purpose of radio. That's the that's purpose, purpose of radio. radio. Right now, if, 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 if they do away with radio, like what I'm Clive is saying is going on in, in Japan, if they do away with radio, then I got to go do that work myself. Yeah. Or, I guess, create, go on Pandora or and go on Spotify. Create your station or your yeah. playlist. And, they, they, and, they, and they, they do mix up the stuff for you. Like my album. My album is categorized with the Hawaiian type reggae and stuff like that. So if you put in home, like, G. Cole Ocho Rios, you get a lot of the Hawaiian stuff. Yeah, too, yeah. Which I don't mind because what happens pretty much is it allows me to listen to something else. Something yeah. that sounds different. Yeah. Right now, I, if, I prefer listening. May not tell a lie. I'm not... I'm is I'm I have to cherry pick my artists from Jamaica. So right now, you know, you know the you know the the the, 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 the major suspects, the proteges, the chronics, the yeah. Jesse Riles, the Dre Allen's, them kind of people. Yeah. They they're normally consistent and you can rely on them for some quality music. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But to build up the rest of my catalog, the music that I listen to, because I love music, I have to search elsewhere. Yeah. Because I gotta go to I gotta go to some Cali artists. I got to go some Hawaii artists. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I got to get some artists from Europe too yeah. for build that up because it's not a situation where I can just say, you know something? Because if, if I rely on 100% of my music from Jamaica, then about 65, 70% of it is going to be gonna be trash. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing also too, I, and we hear this argument about the culture vultures mm. and they might take away thing, mm -hmm. but we're no longer doing it. Right. You know what? You know who one of my favorite reggae artists is today. Oh, gentleman. That's my, that's been my favorite. I tell you, that's been my favorite artist for the last ten years, honestly. Since the album, confidence. Yeah, yeah. It actually, journey to Jah. Journey to Jah. Ja. From, from journey to Jah. There we go. I that was my favorite artist. There we go. To the point where I was looking to that area for more artists. That's how I came. Ziggy Ricardo. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I came, but he never gave me a consistent kind of a vibe like gentleman mm -hmm. but i loved the music gentleman put out you know but he's doing authentic reggae still and dance on music. right you know what i mean right but people just question what it is just because of the fact that he's, he's not from jimmy and to the yeah. point where i don't yeah. think they question it anymore yeah they'll question somebody else yeah but they're yeah. not gonna question gentleman. yeah because he's done it yeah consistently yeah enough they might not like it yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you can't deny what he's done yeah and they like the music they just don't like What's the going fact on? that he's yep 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 yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so it is it is what it is. Um, thank you so much, Clive. We're we're creating a change in radio. That's the goal because I do that's think that's the that, whole idea. That's the idea. <laughs> I think that radio is very important. Um, the problem with the reason why, here's another reason why I love radio because it has restrictions. Yeah. If radio goes, so does the restrictions. Yeah. Which means there is no control. Mm -hmm. No 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 QA. As to what's going into people's ears. And when I say people, the name of the youth. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's primarily what my concern is more than anything else. If you remember um, Howard Stern. Mm -hmm. And Howard Stern would do all these risque things mm -hmm. on radio and cause a big ruckus and the censorship people and blah. And when satellite radio came in, he was gone. First <laughs> opportunity. Yep, 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 yep. You know yep. what I mean? You know... And I think internet radio has a lot of the presenters have gone that direction. It's like, hey, we're free up now. Yeah, 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 yeah. no rules. Let's <laughs> do can, this. We can't play the uncensored tunes. Yep. BT after dark. And, and, and losing the idea that you don't know who's out there listening. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. a grandmother could be listening. Yeah. Uh, someone could be there with their five year old, their yeah. eight year old. And and, 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 and and people are not thinking along those lines. I thought we're free up. Do whatever you know? I want to do. Whatever. There's a radio station that I kind of had to part because they had the, 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 it was uncut is what they call it, right? 
So I was on two hours, right? Everything before me and everything after me was raw and uncensored. So if somebody was expecting to come on and hear me, um, let's for argument's sake say at six o'clock, mm-hmm. and they turned on at five fifty-five, you know what I mean? Yeah, they yeah. might hear some stuff that they'd be like, "Whoa, I gotta get off of here," because you know what I mean. So it it, it kind of, I in my I, I didn't like it because I thought it was hurtful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well as if somebody was listening to me. No, you got to time the thing like a double dutch, like a Chinese Yeah, kid. because, you know, actually, I have learned that I picked up a lot of listeners that way. Mm-hmm. They were tuning in to hear people that come on after me, mm. but pick up maybe the last 10 minutes of my show and say, wait a minute, this is good, you know? That's happened to me on, 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 on South Florida Radio. It's a lot of people who, because they didn't know me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They knew the people before, knew the people after. You know, so and and that's how I, I you're absolutely right. That's how I got a lot of my listeners from local radio. Yeah, and people can't tell me that radio doesn't have an impact because right now when I go out in the streets, not everybody that I know I know from from live feeds. Yeah, because a lot of people I've been in I've been in a venue before and somebody said, "Yo, my nota voice." Eh? Yeah, are you on the radio? Which ultimately means he hasn't been watching. Yeah. It's radio still. Yeah. So you yeah. can't tell me that radio doesn't have its impact. And the reason yeah. why I know radio has its impact is because radio stations have increased by almost 80% yeah. in, the last, yeah. in the last four or five years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've been kind of tracking that myself. Yeah. Yeah. So if radio wasn't as effective on doing what it, it was supposed to do, and I'm not talking about internet radio, I'm talking about real radio. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, even that, in and South if you Florida, remember, if you remember 10, 15 years ago, radio was supposed to be extinct by now. Mm-hmm. That was the argument. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Clive, music and personal communication. That's now in the politics. We got two minutes at the top. Marlon. Yes, sir. We could do this all day. We could do this from <laughs> all night till daylight, as the late you know Jacob I mean? Miller would say. <laughs> I feel like what I got to do is probably have you come out once a week or something <laughs> or once a month or something just just what with what's going on. Um, I heard something the other day. I saw a video from Ricky Chupa. Yeah. Right? I don't know if you saw it, but there was, I guess the government of Jamaica was giving some award to David Radigan. Mm-hmm. Right? And he was livid because he's saying David Radigan is not deserving of this award and started mentioning a bunch of names that should get awarded, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. My outlook on the whole thing pretty much is this. I think David Radigan has done a lot for the music. I don't care what anybody says. I concur. I think he's done a lot because what David Radigan did is he's in a place where the music wasn't. Yeah. Didn't have a stronghold. There you go. And he is the face. It's like infiltration. A lot of time, if you can't get in a room, you need a room, man, you know. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey. So he went and he did that. So And he's had a tremendous effect and he's made, I don't care what nobody said, he's made a commercial, viable genre out of this music in certain places that it wasn't being absorbed like that Absolutely. before. Absolutely. Now, it doesn't mean that the guys that you're talking about haven't contributed. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But... What the, their contributions, however great, however not great, doesn't have anything to do with the contributions that David Radigan did. Correct. So if you are mad that the government didn't honor the people who you want to be honored, that's one argument. Take that up with them. Yeah. But my issue pretty much was, why is it that you feel like Radigan doesn't deserve an honor? No, don't get me wrong. I think your government does have some issues if, if they're honoring him and they haven't honored, honored. anybody else. So that's a problem in yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I agree with both Why are you points. coming for Radigan? Yeah. Is the yeah, part yeah, I did yeah, not yeah, get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we see that a lot. When, when it's not one of us, so to speak, we, we, we see a lot of the, the fight thing. And, in you know, f- f- people feel threatened. Uh, yeah. and, and I think that's um, a lot of what's going on. Yeah. People feel threatened. And a lot of times, these people are not willing to do what, let's say, a, a David Radigan. I've seen selectors playing against David Radigan. Mm-hmm. And then come out and say, boy, I think I'm boring him and cause him a play rubber dub and he won't play the artist dance out too. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen Jamaicans yeah. say that. Yeah, yeah. A lot. You know what I think gives David Radigan the edge over most people? Even the one, even, and a lot of foundation selectors, a lot of foundation DJs, a lot of people have contributed. They don't, they didn't contribute to a lot, you know. They contributed. Yeah. Because I think that's the, that's the issue a lot of times, you know. Somebody contributed. It doesn't mean that they contribute a lot. Right. You know what I mean? It's almost like folklore and, and, and hood classics versus real commercial success. You know, you look at that person and yeah, that brother there, him, 
played on such and such a sound and a him bust that the artist there. Okay, cool. But what exa how, how exactly did that contribute to the culture that is more impactful than what a Radigan has done? It's two totally yeah, different things, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. But you yeah. can't deny the man from you what he has done. You can't. You can't deny it. Why? And, 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 and let me say this here now that you, we're talking about Radigan. Radigan has been an influence on me. Right, right. You know, uh, he's one of those people that I look up to as a radio personality. Mm -hmm. And I try to bring a lot of what he brings to the table right. because of what he has meant to me. Because right. he, he doesn't just play the music. He tells you about the music. And that's what I have always wanted. Right. And that's what I, I want to do as well. I think what we appreciate about a David Radigan, more than that, that most of those people don't appreciate, is I think they're thinking about what he does in the dance hall. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, which, in the clash times, obviously, my dream thing. <laughs> you, know, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he's doing what he's supposed to do. But I am talking about what he has done overall. Yeah. So what some of these people are talking about, and I think that's the reason why he's probably being honored, because it's an overall contribution. Absolutely. That's the whole you know? idea. Yeah. You may have contributed in the dance hall, but what Radigan has done in the dance hall is also what he has done on radio. Yeah. And what I credit Radigan with more than majority of the people who will say otherwise, including most of the them selected it. Radigan love the music more than they do. It's a hustle for them. Yeah. It's been their bread and butter. I Manasa said them no love the da them, them love dancehall because it's a fun job, you know. Yeah. yeah you know what I mean? It's yeah, like yeah. yeah. It's working in a strip club. You know what I mean? Yeah, they might have their yeah. perks. But the thing is it's not necessarily a passion of theirs. If they were rich before they got into dance hall, they probably would never stayed in dance hall. Great point. <laughs> I'm just saying. Great point. Clive is great for tourism. Radigan is influencing music. You're absolutely right. Listen, we're going to have this conference. We have, we have to go pick this up another time. You know? We have to go pick this up another time. Yeah, Rossini, yeah. greetings, greetings, greetings. Thank you so, 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 so very, very much. Um, Kata, I want to not realize her granny did young and she used to battle one time. Ah, ah, ah. I got you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> true thing, true thing. <laughs> Listen, Marlon. Yes, thank you sir. so much for passing through, sir. Well, thanks for having me. The it's pleasure. a pleasure. Brother, brother. Oh, man. I, I, the intent was... I owe a gun, oh, I and change gun, I know. Wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thanks. And of course, I want to thank all these people that are logged in. We're going to set up a schedule. We got to have you come back in here one of these days. And we're going to chop it up. We're going to talk about this music one more time. I, of course, got to do the shameless plug. And of course, there's a brand spanking new single out right about now. It's G Cole. It's called this thing called Reggae Music. And I'm going to end with that one. All right. Keep it moving. Keep it grooving. It is homegrown. Bang, bang, bang. Sam, whoa, whoa. In a star. I'm hooked on this thing called reggae music. Whoa. Have been for a very long time. Since the very first time I used it, Whoa. it's taken over my mind. Ain't a single thing that I can say. Say, and ain't nothing else I can do. Said I won't oh, oh, oh. I know you're loving this feeling. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. and I'm really loving it too. Hey, hey. The Almighty sent me this blessing. Whoa, it's really helping me live. Nah, nah, nah. Say who am I to be missing? Yes, with this feeling, reggae can keep. I'm hooked on this thing called reggae music. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Have been for a very long time. Nah, nah, nah. Since the very first time I used it, it's taking over my mind. Uh, uh, uh. How many times have I told you? Told you things ain't really that. What's making you sad And every little beat of my heart uh -huh. And every single piece of 
in my soul And everything that's within me Oh, oh, oh Said this reggae's taking control Nah, 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 nah Hooked on this thing called reggae music Oh, have been for a very long time Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah uh, Since the very first time I used it Taking over my mind Say the one more time Nobody knows The struggles we've been through Been through, been through Yeah, yeah Without this music I don't know what I would do I don't know what I would do Whoa, whoa, whoa Said I moved on this thing called reggae music And there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. It has indeed been a pleasure. Please be sure to subscribe to the podcast, Homegrown with G. Cole, available now on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Radio.com, and all your podcast platforms. Also check out our website, HomegrownWithGCole.com, to listen up for all things homegrown. The video of this interview is available on YouTube. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Remember, be safe, be kind, and be good to each other. My name is G. Cole, and this is Homegrown. Nakikinika sa musica, Homegrown with G. Cole. Estás escuchando Homegrown con G. Cole. 您现在正在收听的是 Homegrown with G. Cole. You're listening to Homegrown with G. Cole. Remember all the music played here on the podcast Homegrown with G. Cole is available on iTunes, Spotify, and all your digital retailers. Please support the artists.